hello, hello, guys. Uh, for those of you I don't know already, my name is Zach Younger. I'm the Regional Technology Director for Northern California, Hawaii region, and a member of the KWU Master Faculty. Really just fancy titles for it. it's my job to help our top agents and leaders leverage technology to be more productive and more profitable. In Northern California, Hawaii region, we do a Take Command of Your Business class on the third Monday and the first Wednesday of every single month. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am for our guest presenter here today. Many of you are attending just because he is leading the class, which is fantastic for him and awful for my uh, uh, ego. And that's just absolutely perfect. And uh, here's the fun part. We often teach all the things that you should or could be doing inside of command for your business. We don't always teach necessarily exactly why it is that you should be doing these things inside of command. And so that's why I am really excited uh, to introduce you to Jason Flynn. And I'm just going to get out of the way because Jason has so much good value and great content to share with you here today. Jason, thank you for joining us. That's just fancy talk for, you know, I talk a lot and I can easily blow through this hour if you don't get out of the way. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, we're going to jump right into it. Um, like full disclaimer, this whole idea of building a smart database stole it from uh, this guy named Gary Keller at Family Reunion. So he had uh, probably my favorite session from Family Reunion was about building a smart database, what that actually means and why. So we're going to go straight into it. Uh, you could drop questions in the chat. I have the chat hidden because I am that person that chases squirrels. So Zach will keep an eye on that. I have a couple points in there where we can kind of pause and ask, uh, stop for questions. Because um, like I said, I will get easily distracted because that's, if you know me, that's I'm very, very easily distracted. So Oh, whoops, let me get to the right screen. Oh boy, Zach, does it look like something's missing on your screen? Uh-oh, let's see what happens. Oh, I did not know these are animated. <laughs> Here we I'm go. So glad you this is what we're this. gonna talk about today. Yeah, well, I haven't run through it in presenter mode. I built the thing, but this is what happens when you use a Google Slides template and don't run through it on your own. So we're gonna see how this goes. So what we're gonna be talking about is both like both theory and execution about how to do this. Because like Zach said, sometimes we talk about how to do things, but we don't know why. And then sometimes it's all this high level theory that has nothing, you know, you never get the like, okay, how do I actually do this? Um, so we're gonna go through understanding, understanding what a smart database is because a smart database is a smart business. Um, why you're gonna build this out because we're gonna help you pick low hanging fruit. Uh, how to compete with them, and you know who them is. It starts with the Z and R, uh, because 72% of people say that they want to work with you, but only 18% actually do work with you. And we're going to start uh, shifting that tide back in your direction. And then step four is actually showing you the steps that you need to go through this whole process. Uh, what this is and isn't, oh man. So this is not hands-on instruction. We're not going to actually go through. I, I talked pretty quick. We're not going to go through and make sure you're sitting there and you know how to go to each step. Um, but don't worry, although we're moving fast, like Zach said, this is recorded. And we're also going to give you some resources at the end about how to, uh, when you do get stuck, who else you can reach out to for some of that support. But then what it is, is it is a high level conversation about how to leverage technology to create a smart database. Or like Zach said at the beginning, like how to save time or save money uh, in your business. And we're gonna give you a little bit of a step-by-step -step blueprint of how to create this for your own uh, business. And like I said, this is being recorded. And it does not like this little mouse. That's fine. Uh, so who am I? So my name's Jason. I've been with KW about five years, actually almost, almost to the day five years. It was last week I just discovered was my anniversary, apparently. Um, I'm a team leader. I'm out of the Fremont Market Center, uh, Keller Williams Benchmark Properties in Fremont, California. So we're right in the heart of Silicon Valley. But a little secret about Sil Silicon Valley is that we design a lot of technology, but like nobody uses it apparently. So I talk to agents all the time 
that are not using technology to leverage their business. So on the right there, you can see uh, I heart business development. It's why I became a team leader is because I, although I was selling real estate and enjoyed it, I actually love this part right here, talking to agents about how to build a business. And then specifically, I have a background in information technology, which is fancy talk for building databases. I got this degree thinking I will never I will never build a database in my life. Why do I even have it in real estate? Boom. Then Gary comes along and said, we're a technology company. So it's worked out pretty handy. And then I also have a master's in marketing. So using technology, marketing, and business development, that's what I love talking to agents about. And then I'm also, along with Zach, a labs advisor uh, with KW, which means that we're your voices to KW about uh, what we want from our technology, what's working great with our technology, what things that we would love to see changed about our technology. Uh, so I've been very in the forefront uh, through this process. And so I think I bring a unique perspective that we're going to kind of dive through here. Okay, so quick disclaimer about CRMs. I absolutely loathe the question, which CRM is best, right? Like any Facebook group that you go into with agents in it, they always ask what's best. You'll get a hundred answers with somehow 150 different, uh, different CRMs in those hundred answers. And you could build what we're going to talk about today in most CRMs, maybe not every CRM, but most, but we're talking specifically about KW command through this because it's what you have available to you, and it absolutely can change your business doing these steps. And so when I talk about being in Silicon Valley and having agents that don't uh, utilize technology, uh, one in particular, he's doing more than 50 transactions a year. So in our market, that's over 50 million in volume, and he doesn't use a CRM. And we're going to talk about why someone like him could use KW Command even you know, in its current state, how he could use KW command to actually improve his business and improve his relationship uh, with everybody that he knows, especially doing 50 transactions a year. The guy definitely obviously knows some people. Um, so again, it doesn't really matter what you're using, but we are talking specifically about KW command. So if you have questions, that's what I'm going to answer. So then Gary Keller says, Oh man, these animations are fantastic. <laughs> a, uh, a business is an organized effort to sell a product and has customers. But if you don't have customers, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. And we're going to talk a little bit more uh, later about the idea of going E to P, entrepreneurial. Wow, I can't say that word. Entrepreneurial to purposeful in your business. And that's exactly what this is talking about. So uh, the example I just used of the person doing over 50 transactions a year, although he's doing great, making tons of money, and that's fantastic, he's definitely in that E category because he's kind of just relying on the people that he knows to come back to him. Uh, he's relying on word of mouth, which is great, but if you're not being purposeful with it, you actually don't know what opportunities you're losing. And so at least in the strictest definition of this quote, like, he may not have a business. He might actually have a hobby because he has customers, but he's not communicating them uh, with a way that we're going to talk about today. All right. So the smart database. So the, a smart database is one that allows you to have a planned and meaningful communication with your potential customers. So I highlighted those two words because it's important planned and meaningful. Like you could have a conversation with all sorts of people. Um, I just blasted an email out to a whole bunch of people, but honestly, it wasn't planned or meaningful because I wasn't fully taking advantage of the idea of a smart database. And so that's, what's going to separate it from kind of just your normal database, or we're not going to use the opposite of smart because we're going to say positive, but you know what I mean? All right. So, so for a non-real estate example, so a smart database is going to lead to a smart business. So think of a business like this. When you're in the mall and there's a mall kiosk, right? People are walking by and it's a target of opportunity. They're just grabbing people as they walk by. And when you're walking down that mile of the, or that aisle of the mall and you're trying to get to the Apple store and everyone's jumping in your way, trying to sell you phone cases, makeup, or that salt from the Dead Sea, or they claim is from the Dead Sea, that's just a business, 
right? Again, we're not going to use the opposite of smart, but it's just a business. They do well. They would not pay for that space if they weren't doing some sort of business, but they're not a smart business. But then when we look at, let's look at what Chipotle is doing, right? So Chipotle collects information about you. So you, you go to Chipotle, you order your burrito bowl. The end, they say, hey, you know, if you sign up on our little newsletter, I'll give you free chips and guacamole and guacamole is like eight bucks. And so they get your email because that's a good value. Uh, they get your email and then they start tracking your habits. And as they're tracking their, your habits, they decide at one point, they send you an email that says, hey, every Tuesday, you seem to order this, this uh, burrito bowl. Can we have it delivered to you? That would be like the ultimate example of a smart business or anytime you're on Amazon and Amazon's watching everything you're doing, that's the difference between a regular business and a smart business. So a smart database is what you need to drive a smart business and it comes into three levels. So think of this as a foundational kind of building it up. Uh, database, but we're going to talk about how to build all three levels in this class. Uh, so level one is where you just have their name, you have some contact info, you have a contact record. So you're keeping, you're keeping track of how often you've communicated with them, but it's all at will communication. So like I said, I just emailed out uh, to a handful of people in my database that wasn't purposeful or meaningful. It was just, Hey, I thought of this group of people and I needed to send them something. But then we move into level two, which is where you have where you've collected permission. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment here. <laughs> um, you have their personal information and their preferences. So personal information, not being their contact information, but uh, maybe you know where their kids go to school. Maybe you know uh, where each person in the family works, things like that. And then preferences being knowing if they want a condo versus a townhouse versus a single family home. Um, and then you'll have them segmented and grouped into categories. And we're definitely going to talk a lot about that one. And you're providing purposeful, consistent communication. And so we're going to use a, one particular smart plan to do that. And there's all sorts of different ways. Even if you just say, hey, I'm going to send them a, a newsletter the first week of every month, that's at least purposeful, consistent communication. Uh, level three is where we get into automated communication built on triggers. And the reason I put a little asterisk there next to triggers is uh, you may be, a lot of people think of triggers as, oh, this happens, therefore this automatically goes out. Uh, what Gary's talking about with triggers here is the idea, kind of like our, our monthly neighborhood smart plans, the trigger is we know where they we know where their home is. We know that they're gonna receive emails from us. It takes those pieces of information and automates it for us. So that's the trigger. Not necessarily thinking, oh, I received a Facebook ad lead and it triggers a plan. Uh, that's not what we're talking about in this particular case. Uh, where I highlighted the term permission there, this is becoming incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, people love lawsuits, especially here in California. And so, definitely have permission to contact these people. Um, in email in general, I would not buy lists. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking actually contacting your sphere. Um, but especially if you have purchased information, like for calling, make sure that it's uh, TCPA compliant, making sure it complies with the do not call list, because there is a lot of, a lot of news going on lately about not even just in real estate and companies in general of people coming after uh, spam act violators. Jason, really quickly, before you go on go to the it. next slide, I wanted to just elaborate a little more on level two, something that <clears throat> command has done really well that I didn't realize immediately. Let me rewind. So prior to command, I was using top producer for my business as a CRM. <clears throat> and I love to know people's pets' names because let's be honest, people's pets are their children. And so not only do I want to know their children's names, I want that personal information like the pets' names. In the old system that I was using, I would have to put that into notes, and then I'd have to go digging through the notes to find it because, of course, in those notes was also all the details around what their budget was and how many bedrooms and bathrooms they wanted and all sorts of different things. With command, I've got these custom fields that we can create. So I have a custom field called pet name. And so every contact record inside of command down into the, the custom fields area, I know exactly where to look to find out that their dog's name is Lucky or their cat's name is Abby. I also have their favorite candy bar. 
Why? Because people that like candy bars have a very specific candy bar that they love. Every single one of you are thinking of your favorite candy bar right now. What does it look like when all of a sudden you just drop an item of value and instead of sending a sports schedule, you send them three of their favorite candy bars? That's meaningful. That's a smart yep. database. And then you're able to filter and organize based off of that information versus just putting it in the notes, right? So if you just put it in notes and that's not organizable or filterable, you know, it's th this takes it to one step further. I guess that's kind of the theme of this is one step further. Dang it. That was a good tagline I should have used. Anyways, ready to go on? All right, moving on. All right, why this matters. Like I said, we're going to go through some theory, then we'll kind of stop for if there's any quick questions, and then we'll move on to the actual execution of it. All right, so the people, there are already people that know you, they like you, and they might trust you. Some will, and some maybe not yet. They're not sure. Nurturing them through this kind of system is what's going to help solidify that and actually make you the person a choice to call when they're ready to buy or sell in real estate. I don't even actually care if they necessarily call me only when they're ready to buy or sell. I want them to ask me questions. A term I like to use is the economist of choice. When they think about the housing market, which is very, very heavily in the news right now, I want them to come to me. And that's why this matters. And then knowing more than 200 people is really difficult. There's some statistic, I don't know it, but it's you can only truly know like so many people. And on average, I think it's around 200 people is what uh, the average person knows. If I'm using technology to better understand who those people are, I'm more likely to be that person uh, people call. And I use this example with my agents is that, like, I know my dad's birthday. I can say the date, even the year, like right off the top of my head. Doesn't mean I always remember that that day is October 25th. I don't always know like what day I, I couldn't tell you what day it is right now. Honestly, I know it's in April, <laughs> you know, but when I'm using a CRM that can automate some pieces for me to tell me, Hey, it's time to call your dad. Perfect. Like I'm not using technology to automate uh, my communication with anyone, I'm using it to automate my brain to then have a real conversation with them. Because that's something people are afraid of is, oh, I don't want to use technology, I'll lose personal touch. No, we're talking about enhancing your personal touch through technology, because guess what, these other big companies, they're already doing it. So you might as well, you might have might as well take advantage of that as well. And then another piece of why this matters. So we talked about this. This came from the NAR uh, study on buyers and home sellers. I think that's what it's called. It's a very good study that you can go download with your NAR membership for free. It's massive. I want to say it's about 100 pages long, but the first probably 20 pages of it are like just key information. 72% uh, of people say that they would work with their realtor again, but only 18% do. And if I remember right, I think it's always Jason Abrams talking about that number shrinking, right? So your little pool is shrinking as we go, but a smart database is going to help improve that. So if you know that there's these people out there willing to work with you, how are you staying in communication with them at a high enough level that when they're ready or when they have those questions that they come to you and not go to Google because then they'll go to Google, type in something. Uh, I showed a friend of ours the other day, I typed in something about real estate into Google and it popped up a uh, agent's ad, like right in the, not even in the search results, in the actual question bar where it says suggestions, it's like here, did you mean to type A, B, or C, or do you wanna to talk to this Redfin agent, right? So there's definitely a lot of technology trying to get between you and your client, and that's what we're trying to reduce. And then finally, this is high, R high ROI kind of business. Uh, if 6% of the people that you know are gonna buy or sell a house in the next 12 months, how are you keeping in front of them? Um, and then another 6%, and these, these are all actual statistics, another 6% would generate referrals for you. But again, they can't generate referrals if you're not having communication with them because they don't even know that you can help them. Um, if you've ever had a friend or family member end up buying with someone else, which I can guarantee almost all of you have, there's 96 people in here right now, I guarantee you've had this happen. And if not, you probably will, we're just going to try to reduce 
the likelihood of that happening. Uh, talk to those people and find out, you know, oh, hey, just curious, why did, you know, why did you go, you know, why did so-and-so help you? And they'll end up saying like, oh, I didn't know you could help me in this area. Like what? It's only the next zip code over. They think that you're specialized in one area or they think you uh, can't help with condos. You can only do single family homes, things like that. Uh, but again, communication with them is what's going to help you keep in front of them the most. And then this is uh, the classic E to P example that uh, we use from six personal perspectives. This is exactly what we're talking about here. So the entrepreneurial style is doing what comes naturally versus the purposeful style of doing what comes unnaturally. So when you're in the E category, that's that agent I was saying before doing over 50 transactions, but not really into his database, not paying attention. He's just doing what comes naturally. And it's fantastic. If you can get 50 people a year to come buy or sell a house with you, that's great. That's only going to last so long. That's where you need to use, uh, use your database, your smart database to kind of take that to the next level, becoming purposeful. And another way to say purposeful is being a real business owner. You know, this is the difference of being, of owning a practice versus is owning a business. And that's what we're focused on so much in our office is talking about building businesses because we don't want to own practices. Because when you own a practice and you go on vacation, your business goes on vacation too. Let's see. Uh-oh, might be stuck. Here we go. All right, a quick tangent. So like I said, I like distractions and that's what this is for. I'm going to plan in my distractions. So let's say you have 1,000 people in your database. I'm using very generic numbers here. So uh, especially if you're in the Bay Area, these numbers are going to be different to you. Uh, but let's say you have 1,000 contacts in your, in your database. We know that six, statistically, 600 of them will buy or sell over the next 10 years. We're not just worried about what happens this year. This is a long-term game. Uh, so we know that 600 of them will buy or sell over the next 10 years. Um, Whoop, total, see, that's why I said squirrels. Anyway, so <laughs> if we have an average commission of $8,000, you multiply the 8,000 by 600, you get $4.8 million of potential GCI over the next 10 years. So back that up, say, I'm normally not good at public math, but I think I could handle this one. That's $480,000 a year that you're potentially leaving on the table just through communicating with your database at a higher level. This doesn't include the fact that some will give you referrals. It doesn't include the fact that you might have some double lens in there as far as helping, uh, helping them sell in order to buy the next one. It doesn't uh, answer for the point of increased prices. So over 10 years, more than likely we'll see price growth even with how crazy things are getting right now. <laughs> and it doesn't have to do with growth through lead generation. And when I say growth, I mean database growth. Growth. This is just going off of the thousand people that you have in there right now. So if you could use an average of $480,000 more a year in income, this is for you. Uh, but you can only answer that question if you know your income goal and it, if you know how many people that you need in your database. So this is just a quick snapshot of a way to look at it. Um, a great resource obviously for this is get into the millionaire real estate agent. I don't know page numbers off, my off the top of my head, but look at the economic and budget model. And that's where you're gonna help figure out how many people do you truly need in your, uh, in your MET category in your database. And then set a goal for that and say, okay, if I need a thousand people and I'm currently sitting at 200, how do you get from 200 to a thousand? And we're not really talking about that today. We're gonna talk about how to communicate with the ones you have. All right, so that's the meat and the potatoes of the theory. Right. So are there any, Zach, do you have any like burning questions about the theory side of it before we go execution? No, sir. And we don't, Perfect. we're not holding on to any questions. There's been some great comments coming into the chat and cool. answered a couple questions as well. So you're doing great. All right. So this next part, like I said, we go kind of fast, but this is a blueprint. It's being recorded. Zach checked before we started. <laughs> so, and Let's just say something happens. You can always reach out to me and I can share this information again. Here we go. Oh, man. All right. So this is Jason's super awesome formula for building a smart database. So I didn't steal this one from someone. I actually uh, kind of, this is what 
I would do in my business right now. This is how I have my business built out. I have kind of a screenshot for you that I can show, um, but this is exactly what I would do if you already don't have something working for you, which is probably why you're here. Uh, so number one is the foundation of it all is your contacts. You want at least 200 contacts with complete information, right? So if you have name, email, phone number, address, and their birthday, that's gonna go very, very far in the foundation of your database. Um, if you have a hundred and five, all five pieces of information for all hundred, you're probably gonna do better than if you have 200 with a bu bunch of broken information. So let's just get that out there. But if, set a goal, 200 contacts, all five pieces of information. And then people always say, oh, I don't have email addresses. Great, they're probably on your Facebook shoot them a message, right? Like you have ways of getting a hold of these people. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're gonna go through each of these steps as we go. Uh, number two is organizing your database. We talked about a smart database has to be organized. Uh, we're gonna use the doing the database two tags. Uh, it comes from never ending, ref never ending referrals and from bold started incorporating it. Uh, we're gonna talk all about that. I also like to use VIP tags, um, just basically, Let's say I have 200 people, but I know like for a fact, there's 50 people in there that will provide me a piece of either a piece of direct business or referral business. I give them a special tag called VIP. And then we're going to assign them to three smart plans, the quarterly call plan, which is going to space them out based off of DTD2. And if you're totally lost right now, don't worry, we're going to get there. Uh, the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan and a birthday smart plan. Basically, if you take if you don't have a database right now and you follow all five of these steps, I I don't like to make promises, but I can dang near promise you that you will see an increase in the number of people you're talking to. When you see an increase in the number of people you're talking to, you you'll see an increase in business as well. All right, so this is another tangent. So this is how we know that this works, and we're gonna use a Zillow case study is what I'm calling it. Um, so like the Harvard Business School, they base all four years of their education, they base off of case studies. So looking at what real world companies are doing and how can we duplicate that in business. So when a client goes to Zillow's website, uh, when they first go to it, they don't have to register. They just get to look at properties for free and people love that. But as soon as they want to save a property or send a property to someone, they end up having to register, but that's very low intent for that client, right? It, it, all they did was register, like who cares? Zillow doesn't call them. They don't chase them down. But then where Zillow is going to shine is this piece in the middle is that they're doing email only follow-up at the beginning. And they send them monthly emails. And I have a screenshot on the next slide I'll show you. They're doing these email only follow ups of sending them, hey, you looked at this before, here's some information. You looked at this before, here's some information. And they just keep in front of them and they do it 300 million times because I think it's about 300 million visitors a year to their website or unique visitors to their website. Those emails are going to get their clients to revisit the site. And then when they revisit the site enough times, and they find that property that they're like, you know what? I am actually really curious about this property. And they click that. That's when Zillow gives them a phone call, right? They're not calling them the first hundred properties even that they're looking at until they actually say, hey, I'm interested in this property. That's signaling that they have high intent. And suddenly they just became really important uh, to their company. So what we're going to do is something very similar using smart plans. So these are real emails that I get every month and <laughs> just piling up in my inbox. Uh, the screenshot on the left is what Zillow sends me every month. Now I get a whole bunch of these because I get, it's basically everywhere I think I've ever saved a property. All of a sudden I get these little zip code neighborhood report or zip code reports talking about home value, how much is the market moving? How many houses are selling? Here's some popular homes that have sold. Basically just giving me a bunch of random information. So it'll click on it and take me to the website. On the right, you can see the monthly neighborhood uh, nurture email that's gonna go out. But there's a couple key differences here. I mean, there's some very similar similarities, average prices, how many homes are for sale, what's sold. Like if you scroll down there in there, you can see what's sold, but there's two key differences. One is that it's talking about neighborhoods instead of an entire zip code. B, 
because we want it a little bit more focused than saying a whole neighborhood because if uh like in this case it says downtown menlo park that's not the map for menlo park it's just not on there um but if i have downtown menlo park I just want to see what's there. I don't really care what's out in Redwood City or you know two cities over, kind of within the same zip code. Uh, the other key, key, key difference here is if your clients are receiving the one on the left from Zillow versus the one on the right, when they click view homes, it's taking them to Zillow. But the one on the right, when they say explore neighborhood, because my contact information is at the top there, I'm seeing that interaction with them in that email. And I'm kind of keeping them in my web versus them kind of just going wherever and running into client or into agents randomly. So this is keeping them within my sphere and it's helping me keep top of mind instead of the other guy on the left. Let's see. And then one last tangent, then we're moving on. Uh, this is DTD2. So doing the database too, it's a systematic way to keep in touch with your clients four times a year or quarterly. Hence, we're going to assign them to a quarterly call plan. Um, what we're going to do is it's going to take everyone's last name. It's going to break everyone up by the first letter of their last name, put them into little categories like A's and W's, B's and E's, D's and O's. And it's going to assign them to a specific week of the year that I'm going to call them. I don't have a breakdown of it here, but the reason these letters were chosen like A and W is because there's a lot more A's than there are W's or B's and E's. Um, it tries to balance it out as much as possible so that you know you're not getting all the all the names and these are based off of american names so it kind of varies for you but it's trying not to say okay one week i have 400 people to call and the next week i have four right so it balances it out a little bit for you and what we're going to do is set up your database so that each week like every monday uh, when you log into command for the first time in the week, you're going to have some notifications saying, here's the people that you need to reach out to this week. And in most moderately sized databases, it'll be about 10 to 20 people. And you have an entire week to do it, right? And we'll talk a little bit more about what to do when they pop up in your, in your task list. But that's what this is. I have a resource at the end. I'll give you a link uh, where you can get this exact little sheet, a little cheat sheet. This is for 2021, but you can figure it out as you're planning it out down the road. You can figure out how to make it work. Jason, I'll, I'll add there. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the A and W and the B, E and E for, for do the database too, for those of you that aren't aware, that's about 10% of your entire database. That's where Jason came up with that's about 10 to 20 people with a database of 100 to 200 people, that's going to be about 10 to 20. It's about 10% roughly. Yep. And again, it depends on the people's last names in your database. However, A and W is about 10.5% of your database. B yep. and E is about 9.5% of your database. D and O is about 5%. H and V is about 9%. You don't need to memorize all those. We'll make sure they're in the resource area for you. But that's the whole idea is that it's bite-sized chunks. Until you get to the final two weeks, that's really only about 2 and 1% of your database so that you can gear up for the next big week. Well, and I even use in this example, the Ys and Zs. I have a an unusually high number of Ys and Cs. Same with my A and W week is a tough one. I have a lot of Ws. So my A and W week is normally a pretty tough one. But what when we break it down this way, what's going to happen is uh, this is a screenshot of mine. I took off, obviously, personal contact information. But you can see all those green little tags there that say YZ. Uh, that's anyone with the last name starting with Y or Z. All I have to do is click that little tag or go into the filter category there on the right and filter them down. That's if I don't have them automated out to give me task reminders through the smart plan. Um, but it just makes it a very easy way to organize your database and communicate them within a systematic matter, which is basically what we're talking about. All right, so this is the five easy steps to build this database. And then I promise then this is it. Then it's all execution from here. Uh, step number one, we're gonna start with Excel and I'll show you why. It's just gonna make your life easier no matter what CRM you're using. No CRM is fast because they're all web-based. <laughs> uh, step two is we're gonna get it uploaded into command or you can leverage help in order to do that. Uh, number three is we're gonna activate the smart plans. Number four is we're going to send out a magic email to your database. And let me just tell you right now, the magic email, the only thing magic about it is the thing that is the fact that you're actually going to send it. 
but we'll talk a bit about that because it really works. And then step number five is actually doing the work and then doing the work and then doing the work. You have to actually follow the plan that you set in place. And so we're going to talk all about that. All right. So step number one, starting with Excel. Um, this is a piece that I think a lot of people um, miss is that they want to just go straight into their CRM and they want to start just hitting like manually entering people. And that's an awful, terrible way to go about it when we're talking about a database of this size. Um, what I would actually have you do, actually, I'm not going to jump ahead. I don't want to mess up with my slides. Um, but what you're literally going to do is open up a template from your CRM. So I'll show you, I have a slide that shows how to grab it out of command, um, but use their template because you want the information formatted specifically for your CRM. And the best way to do this is almost just go into a trance and just start entering names, no other information. And you just sit there and say, Zach Younger, enter, Eric Bradley, enter, uh, Steve Pierce, enter, Brianna Flynn, enter. And you just go down this list and just start naming everyone you can name and just don't stop until you truly like ran out of people that you know. Doesn't matter if they live near you. Doesn't matter if they've recently bought a house. Doesn't matter if you think they'll never buy a house. That's not what this is about. This is just about communicating with everyone you know. Um, so get to at least 200 people. And then once you get there, now start filling in the information, right? That's where you go into your phone and you figure out, okay, whose phone numbers do I have? You go into your Gmail and you start digging through whose email contacts you have. And the goal is to fill out all five pieces of information uh, that we talked about. And then you're going to assign tags based off of that DTD2 schedule. That's DTD2 and VIPs. That's the only two tags you really have to worry about for now. You could make it more complicated if you wanted, but just shoot for those two tags. And then, whoops, the five pieces of data as a reminder that you're looking for, name for obvious reasons, uh, email so you can email them, phone number so you can call or text them because texting is very much a real thing. Uh, address, that address is important, not let's say you don't want to mail them anything because mailing costs money. That's fine. We need an address for the monthly neighborhood smart plan. If for some reason they don't, you don't have their address or don't feel comfortable getting it, there is a way you can assign smart plans, but it's easier with addresses, but you can as assign a smart plan to uh, their neighborhood. You can also, as a side note, you can assign multiple, uh, multiple neighborhood nurtures. So let's say they, or multiple neighborhoods rather, let's say they also have an investment property or you know that they have two homes or you, know, you can assign these neighborhoods to them. So they're getting those updates. Or if I know that they live uh, here in Fremont, California, and I know that they want to move to Austin, Texas, because that's sounding like what a lot of people are doing, I can assign them a neighborhood in Austin. And then that way they can kind of keep an eye on it as you're going. And then birthday, obvious reasons, you need to be reaching out to people on their birthday. Um, I have a story I'll share later when we get there about, uh, I've, I literally sent out a card and got a $500,000 listing because I sent out one birthday card. So we'll talk about that. And then step two, we're going to upload it to command. Do not upload this all at once. You will, you're going to find some pain most likely if you try to upload all 200 people at one time, I uh, do it in a small batch, start with five, uh, just make sure, you know, start with five, uh, check the formatting, and what I mean by that is look at the formatting in the Excel sheet and then go log into command once it's uploaded and double check that it used the right formatting for the phone number, that it used the right formatting for the addresses. And the reason I'm not providing specific formatting here is because one, we said that you could do this with many CRMs, but two, they also change. And that's why it's important to actually go download the template from command or from any CRM, download the template and use theirs because sometimes they have to make backend changes to have uh, better continuity within their system. And you don't wanna use an old template or use whatever I'm telling you because it, it you're just opening yourself up to a world of hurt. And then make sure all that data transfers correctly before doing the bulk upload. I'm not saying do five, then do five, then do five. Do five, if all, of it, if all of it's looking good, go ahead, go back and go do all rest of the 195 of them. So I've done within command, 
I did it where we started with five and then I did 1400 and it worked out just fine. So it works as long as you take your time and take this, uh, do your steps correctly. This is what I'm talking about where in the top right there, when you're in the contacts applet in command, the top right, there's an import button. It's gonna pop up this import contacts. You should also get this little purple guide. If you don't have that, you can press the little guided tour button next to the import button and you'll get it. And it's gonna walk you through exactly what to do. Click that uh, where it's all caps, uh, blue, blue or green download button. Um, it's gonna download that CSV for you. And when it downloads that CSV, it's gonna look like this. And it's formatted exactly the way that they need it as far as it wants first name and last name separated. So if you went through that Excel sheet and you just wrote Zach Younger in one line, then you would have to figure out how to split that between first name and last name. That's why it's important to go get the, um, go get the template first before you start going through this. Now you'll see there's a lot of different fields on there, prefix, suffix, full legal name, birthdays, oh wait, birthdays we do want, home anniversaries, uh, other personal phone numbers. There's all these different categories. Like I said, start with a five. If you happen to know the others, fantastic, go for it. Um, but start with those five first. Then we're going into activating smart plans. So the three smart plans that we talked about are the quarterly call plan, the monthly neighborhood nurture, and the birthday smart plan. So with the quarterly call plan, actually, you know what, we'll go, here's what they look like in command. So again, if you don't know how to do smart plans, um, we're not walking through step-by-step -step how to do them. Uh, we'll talk about resources at the end, but spoiler alert, talk to your market center tech trainer in your office. If you're not sure who that is, talk to your team leader. If you're not sure who that is, find someone in your office and ask them and they'll point you in the right direction. Uh, but the first one we're going to do is the quarterly call plan. It's not calling for you. It's not texting for you. All it's doing is giving you a reminder once a quarter. Um, it's going to pop up a little task reminder for you when you first log in. You also get a notification through the Kelly app saying that, hey, here's the people that you need to be contacting this week. And it'll be that 10%. Um, the monthly neighborhood nurture, this one is going to automate on your behalf. It's going to be sending out an that email template that I showed you before, based off of whatever addresses that you have assigned in their neighborhoods. And then the birthday smart plans one about reminding you when it's time to communicate with people around their birthday. It's going to give you a notice five days, or maybe it's four days, four, four to five days prior. And that's where you can get a quick birthday card together and get it in the mail. So just as we'll make up a new, I think this is tangent number four. So I literally did that. I had never sent a client a birthday card before. It was a guy I had worked with at, in my prior career, sent him a card, said, uh, I threw in a $5 Starbucks gift card that someone else had given me. He lived in Ohio. We used to, we both lived together in California. He lives in Ohio, sent him a birthday card. Hey, happy birthday. Here's Starbucks to keep you warm because it was middle of winter. P.S. The 49ers suck. And he called me back two days later. He gets the card. He calls me back and he's like, that was so nice of you. Like just send me a birthday card. It's like, Oh, okay, cool. He goes, you know, I'm going to be in town next week. I need to sell my house in California. You want to get together? Boom. 500, $500,000 listing literally by sending out a $7 card when you include the gift card. So you would think I would do it a lot more, but do the birthday plans because no Jeez. one else, if uh, go for it. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, Everyone right now is going on Facebook and typing happy birthday, dude. And that's it. That's all they're doing on Facebook. Um, a good friend of ours, Michael Putnam, takes it to a whole new other level with uh, doing video. And that's fantastic. But if you're thinking that you're staying top of mind by just saying happy birthday on Facebook, you're wrong. And so follow these, follow this birthday plan, take it to another level, make it personable, because that's what we're doing with technology, technology is reminding us to be a better human, reach out to those people in whatever avenue that they're most likely to respond to. Go Zach. So what I wanted to bring up with this birthday smart plan, the reason I absolutely love it. And one of the reasons Jason does too, is five days before their birthday, it tells you to write that handwritten note. So you don't, you're not struggling to do it and send it out two days before their birthday. What I also love is the day before their birthday is that task to call them. And most agents wait till their birthday to call them. And I would urge you to do this a little bit differently. Call them the day before their birthday. 
and say, hey, happy birthday. I was thinking about you. Everyone else is going to wish you a birthday on your actual birthday, but I'm not like everyone else. I'm better than them. <laughs> what, put, insert your personality into that conversation. By the way, if you forget to call them on their birthday, you can do the exact same thing the day after. Wish them a happy belated birthday or say, hey, everybody else wished you a happy birthday on Facebook yesterday and I didn't want to be like everyone else. I wanted you to feel special today, the day after your birthday. It still works. It works 100% of the time. Now, the other thing I wanted to bring up here is that monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan. There is also a biweekly neighborhood nurture smart plan in the smart plans library that you might choose to use. Jason loves the monthly neighborhood nurture because he's also super purposeful about sending other emails to his entire database throughout the whole year. Unfortunately, a lot of agents get really busy and don't think to go draft up these emails that Jason does so eloquently and sends out to his database. The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, or the MREA2, the revised edition, tells us that if you send 26 emails to the people in your database a year, that's the magic number, 26 emails at least. And if you think about that, that's bi-weekly. If you send an email every other week for an entire year, that's 26 emails. That's why I love the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture because it doesn't put it back on me to go come up with another 14 emails that don't get sent out because of the monthly neighborhood nurture. And so you have options. And whatever works for you, I love what Jason does because he actually takes time and he's super purposeful about sending out emails personalized and out to his entire database and sometimes chunks of his database based on interests and things like that. Just know there's the biweekly neighborhood nurture, which is designed to follow the model of the millionaire real estate agent, which is 26 emails a year. Exactly. There you go. No, for sure. I am like, if you can do... And we'll talk about that when we get to the magic email. Um, it's kind of based around that. So with that, we'll keep cruising, doing pretty good on time. Um, so this is the most important part about when you're assigning the quarterly call plan, the one where you're going to use DTD2, is you want to use this option called start all on the following date. So you don't have to wait until you get to that week to assign them to the smart plan. I can right now say, Okay, I want all the A's and W's. I select, you know, I created the tag in command. I select that tag, select all, say bulk, assigned a smart plan, choose the quarterly, the quarterly call plan, but I don't want it to start until Monday, May 3rd. And then that way it it's gonna start it on your appropriate week. And so then the B's and E's would be the next week, I think that would be the 10th, right? And so you can actually go through right at the beginning. You could go do this this week. You could assign everyone for the entire year, or really it's just for the first quarter because then the smart plan's going to reassign. And then once it hits, it's going to reassign and it's going to go in perpetuity and it's going to keep moving for you. So you pretty much only have to set it once for the most part and forget it. Technically, in this case, uh, when you get a couple years into it, you might want to reset it. But let's worry about that in a couple of years. Otherwise, you're getting your call plan on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, instead of I like to get them on Mondays because, you know, <laughs> I want to see what I got to deal with for the rest of the week. All right. So step four is the magic email. Um, the reason we're going to talk about this one is people are afraid to talk to their people. And I've been there, right? Like if I email this, like if I start, people don't want me to call them. They don't want me to spam them or rather they don't want me to call them about real estate and they don't want me to, want me to spam them. Great. Don't call them about real estate and don't spam them, but you can still run this whole thing, right? When we're calling them, we're not talking about real estate. We're just calling them and saying, hi, how are you? And just in our culture, if I ask them how they're doing, they're going to eventually ask me how I'm doing. That's where I can kind of slyly plug in real estate. Uh, but we're not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about this with calling them, asking them who do they know that wants to buy or sell. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have that conversation with them, but it's not every single quarter. Um, then with, you know, feeling like you're going to spam them, remember, we're sending them the information that they want because Zillow does it. If Zillow is doing it to their 300, they must have a billion people in their database by now. Um, if they're sending this to them, they're doing it for a reason because they know it makes money. So what the magic email is going to say is we're going to send them an initial email and it's going to say, um, do I have it on the next slide? Let's see. What the email is going to say is, 
in an effort to help my friends and family have a better understanding about the real estate market, I'm going to send you a couple of emails a month. And that's where I was, you know, if you're doing the biweekly one, or if you're doing monthly plus sending them a, uh, an additional email, you know, I never went to spam you. So please respond, yada, yada. I have the exact email that I sent at the beginning of last year to my database in the resources at the end, we'll show you a link to a shared drive. Um, but this is a real example. I sent out 400 emails. It went to my little sphere of 400 people. It was actually three that requested to opt out, opt out. And what I'm doing is I'm telling them, don't hit unsubscribe, just hit reply. Because I don't want all of a sudden the mail service to be like, oh my God, like this guy's sending out spam. They're all unsubscribing. I just say, hey, hit reply. Something I didn't realize is that then they're going to tell you why they don't want to hear from you. So I had three. One was a friend that just said, you know what? I'd rather not get the emails. Fantastic. You're off the list. Have a great day. Bye. Marketing command, <laughs> right? I have a little note saying she doesn't want the emails. Uh, one was a family member that said, you know what? I'd rather you just call me more often. Oh, okay, great. Well, now when I do DD, DTD2 and her name pops up, I know she actually wants me to call. And guess what? We're probably going to talk about real estate because that's all I talk about. And then one, I don't even know how they got on the list. I have no idea who they are. They just said, I don't want this crap. Okay, great. Like, thank you. I don't know who you are. But what was surprising was that 20 or more, I, I lost count at one point, uh, 20, we'll call it 20 plus, told me that they want the information that, or they ask specific information to say, well, what do you know? Like I have a large sphere of VA VA buyers so that, you know, they ask questions about that. All of a sudden I'm engaged in these conversations that I wouldn't have had, had I not sent the email out. And then four specifically identified that they have a real estate need. Uh, I believe all three were connect or three of the four were connecting with referral agents. And then one was more direct than that, but connecting, I mean, that's three referrals out of a single email. It's pretty, uh, pretty good ROI seeing it cost me exactly $0 to do this. All right, so we have, I have that exact template that you can copy, do not copy it word for word, or you're going to look like an idiot because it's going to have my name on it. <laughs> and then step five is do the work. And like, I know you guys know this, but what you're going to have to do is monitor your tasks daily, right? So log in on Monday, knock out the tasks. Um, one of the most requested features in command right now is the ability to bulk delete reminders. What does that tell you? If it's the most requested feature, it's because people aren't clicking through their task or bulk delete tasks rather. Um, you gotta you gotta do the work and you gotta check them off. And I'll kind of talk about that in a moment of what I'm doing when I'm actually going through them. Make sure you log the notes in command because again, that's what's gonna make it a level three database or a level two database is actually having purposeful communication with them, but also logging their personal preferences and notes about the clients. And then whenever you add contacts later on, don't forget to assign them to your smart plans. Uh, maybe set yourself a little reminder. If you don't want to sit down right then and do it, maybe set yourself a task reminder to say, Hey, it's a, uh, it's time to go add these people to the three different smart plans, because as the database grows, you're going to want them all assigned to the same stuff. Um, okay. Jason, so this, I want to give yep. a quick little hack there. Um, create a tag inside command that's called smart plans. That way, when you add a new contact, all you have to do is add the tag smart plans to that contact. And then you set all three of those smart plans with a, a tag trigger. And I'll put in the, the chat box how to set up a tag trigger so that every time you add a new contact, all you got to do is just add that tag that says smart plans. That will then tell, tell the system to go activate all three smart plans. And if they ever unsubscribe from smart plans, you'll have an identifier that you would put them onto a smart plan at some point. And if they're not on the smart plans, that means they unsubscribed. And, but now you have an identifier that shows that. Just a little life hack, and I'll put the help article in the chat for you. That's a fantastic idea. I should have included that. <laughs> I will make that note for next time. So this is what it's going to look like when you log into command. So notice in the top right corner, because I honestly don't remember what the default looks like right now when you log in to see what your dashboard is. But if 
what I want is I want my tasks to be at the very top of my homepage or my dashboard. So hit customize home in the top right there. And then you can move around the little widgets. And I wanted my tasks up front. And I know some people want their leads up front. I would put them both on the front page, you know, put your tasks and your leads uh, one next to the other. And then literally what you can do is log in on Mondays and you're going to see, say you have your 20 new tasks in there. And it's like, okay, it's lead generation time. Maybe at first go knock out all your problems from the weekend. And then you're going to sit down and you're going to go through and say, um, so where it says phone call with Jason Flynn, that's from one of these quarterly call plans. I can go through and say, okay, Jason Flynn. Okay. Yeah. I just talked to him last weekend. Don't need to call him check. And then you go to the next one down and you say, oh, like Zach Younger pops up on there. You know, I haven't talked to him in a while. If I call him, it might, he's a pretty busy guy. I don't want to call him. So instead I'm going to uh, shoot him a text and just check in and say hi. And then maybe it's Facebook messages, maybe it's Instagram DMs, LinkedIn, like however you're communicating with certain people, this is saying go communicate with them. Now, in some cases, it might come across and be like, you know, I just, I'm not going to talk to that person. And you're making the conscious, de conscious decision not to reach out to that person. That's better than not reaching out to them because you never, because you forgot they exist. Right. So I do have some people sometimes where I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to reach out to them and maybe I should just remove them because we're just not, for whatever reason, we're not going to communicate anymore. Um, and that's okay. If you have to clean up your database, that's fine. But you could be surprised if you reach out to them and say, hey, you know, go on Facebook, shoot a message, go look at their most recent posts, see if, it, if you have anything to add to it. And instead of commenting on the post, shoot them a message and say, hey, Saw your post about going to Iceland. Oh my God, that looks awesome. I want to go to Iceland. I've literally used that Iceland one on someone and had a started basically it rekindled a whole relationship with someone out of uh, messaging them about Iceland of all things. So, and then that's literally what you do is every Monday, those pop up, go do the thing. Every Monday, a new list pops up, go do the thing. And it sounds repetitious and boring and it might be, but actually don't think it's boring because you're talking to the people like not only if, if you want to be a high D and just put dollar signs on their head, fine. You're talking to people that could give you money. If you want to be a high I and say, I'm talking to the people that I actually care about them. Great. Go talk to them and have a conversation with them. That should be exciting if you're a high I. So if this sounds too easy, I got three bold laws for you. Oh my goodness. Hold on. I just killed my screen. Uh, so success is simple and not easy right? So how simple is this? You are putting 200 people in your database. You're telling command to do most 90% of the work for you. All you're doing is the, or eight, let's call it 80% because then you're doing the 20%, which is calling them. The most important thing is picking up the phone and calling them or messaging them. Uh, so su success is simple and not easy. Uh, the fortune is in the follow-up obviously, right? Like this is, we talked about the, your 10 year value of your database for a reason, because you are going to, uh, we're talking about this as a long-term thing. This isn't, you're going to go get business this year. You are also going to get business this year, but we're looking at this as a business, as purposeful. We're not looking at this as let's just go make some quick money. And then when you're sitting there and people aren't picking up the phone or everything's going wrong because some weeks it's going to feel that way, focus on the plan and not the problem. That's my favorite bold law of all of them. You have a plan. I gave you a blueprint has my name on it. It's called Jason's Super Awesome Blueprint or whatever I called it. Uh, just follow the plan, call the people, call the people, call the people. And then if, if you really think it's going bad, add more people to your database. <laughs> you know, go, that's where you get into lead generation, add more people to your database and then keep calling them. Because like I said, this is literally what Zillow can't do, right? So Zillow is just sending them email. Zillow can't communicate with a billion people that don't have enough agents. Right. So you need, this is the thing that's going to set you apart from them. And let's see how to get more help. So you have your market center, you have your market center tech trainer, and this is if you're a Keller Williams associate, um, you have your market center tech trainer. Um, not every office has one right now, but just go talk to someone in your office, your team leader, um, the, their, your MCA is another good resource. There's someone there that will get you in touch with the right people. You also have your regional tech trainer. So like Zach is ours for Northern California and Hawaii. Um, I wouldn't always just go straight out to him. You have your market center for a reason, but 
utilize the classes that he's hosting like this one. Uh, this is how you're going to get the more personalized help instead of just relying on, ooh, I should have put KW Connect on here. <laughs> uh, we have the KW Command Facebook group though. This is a group of people we have, I wanna say it's 36,000 people in there. It's a pretty big network of people and there's some pretty big names in there such as uh, Zach floats around in there ask, answering questions, Marty Miller, Mike Hillary, a lot of uh, very popular KW tech folk are in there answering questions as well as some people from KWRI staff and the labs team in there. Uh, we like to keep it a little bit more of masterminding of how to better use command. Um, so if you're a KW associate, you have access to it, just go to uh, just go to Facebook, type in KW command, look for the group and make sure your profile is filled out. So it says somewhere in there about being KW, hit submit and I'll approve it for you. And then lastly, there are third parties and I bring this up for a reason is that there some people don't have the time or don't have the patience to want to go through all this. The one thing a third party cannot do for you is get your information together. But once you have all that in Excel ready to go, uh, I have companies that will do it for a fee that I'll, I'll put a couple in the resources. I didn't put them in the slides because they're going to change from time to time. Some will be great. Some won't be great. Uh, but there are companies out there that are out there to help you because again, not everyone wants to do this. It's not not everyone has, it's not necessarily your best dollar per value at that moment. The market is crazy right now as far as helping out buyers. Um, so there are resources available for you. Don't feel like I just don't have the time, so I'm not going to do it. That That's the worst thing you could do is say, I'm not going to do it because I don't have time. And then here's your resources. So uh, bit.ly slash smart database share. So I didn't realize Zach stole smart database for the <laughs> bit.ly. So I did smart database share. Um, in there, I have the DTD2 schedule and that exact email template. I'm gonna update it from time to time because I kind of plan on keeping this around for a while. I There's a, those two resources in there. And then also I haven't really, I've only messed with it a little bit, but in this idea of communicating better with the people that I'm in business with, um, bit.ly slash Jason the Flynn email. And so Jason the Flynn is how you can find me on any of the social networks, but just Jason the Flynn email. Um, I have an email newsletter where we're talking about tech marketing and actually building businesses worth owning. So that's a great way to communicate with me. Um, I just realized uh, back on the first slide was my phone number I'll, or my email, not my, please don't blow up my phone number right now. Um, but you can shoot me an email if you have questions, sign up on the newsletter and that'll help you a little bit too. And I believe that is it, Zach. Jason, I did put all of those links into the chat box. I also just put your email address into the chat box for everybody to get access to it. I got to say, Jason, there is a lot of value there today. Lots of great ideas, lots of great comments coming through, and you know you're bringing value when 90% of the people stay five minutes over on the yeah. call because Woo. there's value. Um, we will be taking this recording and posting it to multiple different Facebook groups, including our regional Facebook mastermind group. And Jason, I'm pretty sure they'll be okay with us putting it in the KW Command Facebook group because it's just all about value. Uh, yeah. And so it's going to just be fantastic. I've got a little bit of time. Jason, if you need to go, I completely yep. understand, but I, I'd love to just answer any other additional questions that people might have as well. I got time. What questions okay, that's do easy. you guys have? <laughs> yeah. I'm going through this list. I'm seeing who's in here. I see you, Carrie Qualters. I see you in there. Cool. Looks I'm like you answered then. everyone's questions and we were answering them as we yeah. went along. Yep. No. So like I said, if you need anything, like reach out to me, I'm not, I may not get right back to you just because it's a, uh, it's a busy life over here, but hit me up. Also, if you, if you've got referrals for the Bay area, I mean, everyone's telling us that everyone's moving out of the Bay area and moving to everywhere else in the world. So if, uh, if you need an agent out here, I got 104 of them that are pretty cool. So hit me up and I'll, uh, I'll get you connected with them. Jason, thank you so much. Everyone that attended, thank you. Go take territory, take more listings, build a smart database and run a smart business. Happy Monday.
Thanks, Jason. See ya. Thank you so much.